which camera should I buy? That's the question we get more often than any other question. So today I'm going to answer that, whether you're looking for a budget camera, your first camera, or you're looking for a camera that will do a great job at sports, wildlife, portrait photography, or even shooting video. I know a lot of you want to be YouTubers. I'll tell you exactly what to get. For those of you on a budget, check out this little Samsung, the WB1100F. It's a... Uh, I got this one used for $135, but you can pick one up new for $200 and it does a great job. It does all the things you'd want from an SLR. It has a fantastic zoom on it. You can adjust exposure compensation and do some light night photography and the image quality, pretty good. It's pretty amazing for $200. This is a, a huge step up for somebody who's getting good at smartphone photography. Just to put it into perspective, this is a picture we printed from our smartphone. And it's nice and sharp because modern smartphones have lots of megapixels. But what they can't do is get, say, a decent portrait. And this is nothing glamorous. This is literally just a snapshot in the backyard. But to, that's just to illustrate the difference between a smartphone and a, a camera with a real lens. Being able to zoom in gets the features on the face looking much better than if you were to get that close with a wide-angle smartphone lens. It also blurs the background out, removing distractions. It's just, it's so important. You also get manual control over a lot of really important settings. You can get that at this link down here. And uh, by the way, we get a few pennies from every link that you use of ours. So please do use those, use those links. It helps to support us. I'll say we've never accepted uh, money or free equipment from any camera or lens manufacturer in order to stay unbiased. So these recommendations aren't paid placements. These are all based on our actual reviews of dozens and dozens and dozens of cameras and lenses. If you're at that $200 point and you don't mind buying a used camera, but you think you might get a little more serious about your photography and you want to be able to put on multiple different lenses, the Samsung doesn't have interchangeable lenses. It's that one fixed lens. It's a good lens, but it's fixed. Check out the Canon T3. It's an older camera, but it's very, very capable. And you can pick up a kit with a good lens for $200 and that will get you started. From there, you can upgrade your lenses or upgrade the body later, later and keep all your lenses. You can add on external flashes, hook it into a studio. You can do just about anything you want. It's a very capable camera and to be able to pick one up for $200 used is pretty amazing. If you can spend up to $500, you can take a big step up from that camera. The Nikon D5300 is a fantastic value for $500 used and that's with a lens. The D5300 has an articulating screen on it. It has Wi-Fi and GPS, just about every feature you'd want. It's a previous generation model, which is why it's such a good value, but it still takes absolutely fantastic cameras, uh, fantastic pictures, and it's even capable of some light sports photography. It does really good with the autofocusing. If you want something that's more small and compact, maybe a little bit more user-friendly, check out the Olympus EM10. This fantastic little camera, not only is it just gorgeous, but it's very lightweight. It has a tilting touchscreen here. And uh, for travel, it's just one of my favorite cameras of all time. It's the one I recommend to my friends. You can pick up an entire kit for $500 used, and that's just, it's just an incredible value. And later, if you decide you want to put on bigger lenses, go for portraits or telephoto or, or macro photography, you can do all of that. It's got Great video capabilities, as does the D5300 and full manual controls. They both have that. So check that out. I will say, we're not just evaluating the camera bodies here. A lot of people make the mistake of just looking at the number of megapixels or, or the zoom factor on the lenses. But we're evaluating usability, the ability to grow into it, how the camera feels in your hand, how it actually works. All these sorts of intangibles that aren't listed on the box or the spec sheet. Once you get a camera, if you want to learn how to actually use it, visit this link, sdp.io slash tutorials. We have one hour free tutorials for all the cameras you'll see recommended here that will teach you the ins and the outs of using your camera and get you started on it. Share that link with your friends. Which camera should you buy if you want to shoot landscapes? And good news is landscapes don't have to be particularly demanding. Any of the cameras we recommended already are capable of taking fantastic landscape photos. But if you want to get a little more serious, I'll, I'll make some more specialized recommendations, starting with the Sony Alpha 6000, also known as the Sony A6000. This cute little camera is very capable with just deep dynamic range and fantastic image quality. 
The kit lenses is okay on it, but the fact that you can pick up a brand new copy for $550 makes it just a fantastic value. The link down here will take you to both new and used versions. So these prices are, are current as I'm looking at it. You might find higher or lower prices because those kinds of things can change. I like this for landscapes, not just because of the fantastic sensor, but because it tilts like this. So I can put it on a tripod down low and look down on it without having to get on the ground. So if you get that shot where you're down with the flowers, <laughs> you don't have to actually climb onto the ground. That means a lot to me. It's also got a viewfinder, which is really nice for, for taking in the scene in bright light where the screen on the back might be a little bit hard to see. Sony Alpha 6000, great camera, also small and light, so if you're taking on a long hike, makes it just a great deal. A step up from that, quite a bit higher in budget. If you can spend $1,500 on a new body, you will take a huge leap forward if you upgrade to the Nikon D5500 and that Sigma 18-35 f1.8 lens. The D5500 is a super lightweight body, Got to bring mine out. We do own one. It's a, just a fantastic camera. It's just about as light as these little mirrorless cameras, but it's a full DSLR with a fantastic autofocusing system, so it could double for sports and all that. But maybe most importantly, you can attach the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 lens. This lens attached to that body will produce absolutely stellar results that are unbelievably sharp, as sharp as a professional camera. Now for landscapes, why am I not recommending you get a super wide angle lens? That, that could be your next lens. Something like, uh, something in the full frame range of 16 to 35 is really useful for landscape photographers. But if you got to get one lens to start, this is the one that I recommend starting with. I find that range to be most useful. You can step your budget up a little bit more, all the way up to $2,400 for a new body or $1,700 if, if you get this gear used. The Nikon D610 has a bigger sensor. It's a full-frame sensor. That means that you'll get cleaner images when you're working in ideal light. And uh, the, my favorite lens to pair with that is the Sigma 24-105 to f4. We have two copies of this. That's how much we love it. And yes, we actually paid for them. This lens, it's, it's big and heavy. It is a real lens, but so far the quality is just unmatched. That range going from 24 to 105 is just fantastic and terribly useful. And I know you can get the Nikon 24 to 140. It's a good lens, but it's not nearly as sharp as the Sigma 24 to 105. So don't necessarily get the body with the kit lens. That'll be less expensive, but upgrade to this lens here and you'll get better results. If you were to use the kit lens, I think you'd be happier with my previous recommendation of the D5500 and the uh, Sigma 18 to 35. If you can spend more than $2,400, if you're getting really serious about your landscape photography and you want to make just big, huge, sharp prints, pick up a used D800E and a used copy of the Sigma 24 to 105. Together, it's fantastic value. I know it's a lot, 2,500 bucks, but you will get uh, breathtaking professional images that you can print very, very large. We work with similar combinations all the time, and they work just spectacularly. If you want your camera to do some double duty, if you want to be able to take sports photos and such, check out the D810 instead. The D800D, fantastic camera, but it didn't have a great autofocus system. The D810 is the next generation of that, and the biggest thing Nikon did was they improved the autofocus system. So autofocusing, not that important for landscapes. But some people want to use it for other things too. And for an all-around camera, the D810 is actually much better. So I would again pair that with the Sigma 24 to 105 as my first lens. And, and there you might decide you need to go wider, or maybe not. But you can always add later and swap those lenses out. The ultimate landscape <laughs> kit, though. Again, this is after extensive testing of both various combinations of bodies and lenses. Trips all around the world is the Canon 5DSR. Again, with this fantastic Sigma 24-105 f4 lens, the 5DSR has 50 megapixels. It's the most high megapixel sensor out there. And in our comparisons to both the 36 megapixel D810 and the 42 megapixel A7R2, especially when you factor in uh, using uh, actual native Canon mount lenses like this, the, the images are noticeably better coming out of the 5DSR, they're just noticeably sharper. And uh, it's just a, a fantastic, durable combination to work with. It's, it's big, <laughs> it's big and heavy though. It's big and heavy. So you gotta be really committed to 
dragging this out to wherever your landscape photos are going to be. But if you get that far, that combination will not let you down. Now, what if you're into sports? Let's cover everything from shooting your kids' indoor basketball game up to the professional sports shooter. The T6i is where I recommend people start. It's not cheap at almost $1,000 new, but it'll do things that this camera won't do, or the Sony Alpha 6000 won't do, or the EM10 won't do. So many people start out with one of these cameras and they say, well, it's fine until I go to shoot my kids indoor soccer game. And then it just never focuses and the shots that it gets are super, super noisy and grainy. Well, that's, that's because these cameras don't have what's called an off sensor phase detect focusing system. You'll be much happier with the fantastic focusing system on the T6i. And I recommend picking it up with the, the kit lens. You get two options for the kit lens the 18 to 55 and the 18 to 135. I recommend picking it up with the 18 to 135. This is the camera and lens here. The 135 on this body is has plenty of reach for sports photography and this should be fast enough. Now, later you might decide that you want to get a faster lens. Maybe you want a 50 millimeter f1.8 for about 100 bucks for, for things like basketball or volleyball where we can get really close. That one will work even better. This will work great for long distance sports and you always have the option to upgrade your lens later. But at this price point, that's about the best you're going to do. If you can spend a little bit more, I would upgrade you to the 7D Mark II, also from Canon, and put that same lens on it, the 18-135 uh, to kit lens. The kit is a pretty good value and this is a good all around lens. 7D Mark II focuses much faster than that previous T6i. T6i is good. 7D Mark II is professional grade. It also shoots 10 frames a second, which is extraordinarily fast. It's like, again, in professional quality range up there, it, it's just a fantastic camera for sports. That'll cost you about $1,700 new, or get it used, because the used prices on these kits are pretty low at $1,350. Let's step it up to the next level. If you uh, find that this lens doesn't have quite the reach for you, or your images are still kind of noisy, you can upgrade to a 70-200 f2.8 lens, and that will gather four times more light at the long end than this kit lens will, and will also reach much, much farther. So together, these two will cost about $2,800 new, or about $2,000 used, and it would definitely push you towards the uh, used option on this, I, I promise. You will not be unhappy with this combination. You could definitely get pro grade results with this, but there is still one step above this. And I don't expect a lot of people to go out and buy this for their first camera. But if you have a $10,000 budget, check out the Nikon D4S. It has the same extremely high frame rate, uh, but it's extremely durable and the, the focusing is, is pretty much unbeatable. The image quality is fantastic, but pair it with this amazing Sigma 120-300 f2.8 lens. has more reach than the 70-200 f2.8. The images are unbelievably sharp, extremely contrasty. It all just works extremely well. Check out our channel for a view on that 120-300 lens. Now, let's move on to portraits. So many people want to take great pictures of people. They don't want to pay a portrait photographer. They want to get their own great results or maybe they even want to get paid. So let's go through the kits, starting at the lowest possible value here. Again, I'm going to point you at the Canon T6i because the, the T6i here, just a fantastic body and a, a great value at $950. Now, you don't have to spend $950, but those cameras that I recommended at the beginning of the show, those are good enough for portraits, especially for things like group portraits where you don't really need to blur the background. Any, any camera can do a good job of a group portrait. I'm talking about more serious portraits where you blur the background, you want the facial features to look nice. The T6i with that 18 to 135 kit lens can do a really good job and it also leaves you plenty of room to upgrade into higher quality lenses, also at a great value. Adding on this $110 Canon, what they call the Nifty 50, a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, fantastic plastic. It's, it's the best way to spend $110 if you want to get some portraits. Put that Nifty 50 on here and you'll get just gorgeous, smooth background blur, either for headshots or for full body shots. 
It's a prime, so maybe it's not quite as versatile, but I promise you'll be blown away by the results that you get out of it. If you can spend $3,000, it's a big jump. <laughs> I know, because really for me, the T6i and these lenses will, will do it until you're ready to jump up to an expensive full frame camera. But again, for this full frame camera, I think the best value at this price point is the Nikon D610. And I would pair that with an off-brand lens, the Tamron 70-200 f2.8. We tested, but well, we tested all of these things, but the 70-200 f2.8 is extremely, extremely sharp, quite a bit less expensive than the Nikon version of that lens, and will just get great results. So $2,000 used, this is, again, professional portrait or wedding photographer uh, setup. And in fact, I see lots of pros using lower end gear. So you'll have to learn some skills and I can help you with that too. <laughs> but as far as the gear goes, this will get you going just fine. There's one more level above that. That's the Canon 5DSR. This is just, this is just our favorite portrait photography setup. This, having all this gear sitting here, this is what we grab when we have a client in. The Canon 5DSR and the Canon 7200F28. We've tested every combination. This Canon 7200F28 has an advantage in that it's just, it's just longer up close. So you don't have to get quite as close to your subjects. It gives you much better rendition of facial features, much more flattering uh, way to render the nose and the forehead so they don't kind of look cartoonish. This is just our favorite setup. It's not cheap though. A little under five grand for a used copy, or about $5,600 for a new copy. The 50 megapixels will allow you to make as prints as big as you possibly will want to make, or you could decide that you want to crop down from like a torso and headshot to just a headshot. This gives you a lot more options in post-processing anyway. It just can't be beat whether you're working outdoors or in a studio. So if you're a wildlife photographer or you want to be a wildlife photographer, which camera should you buy? Those cameras I recommended at the beginning, especially the, the D5300, D5500, or T6i, those will work. You could just pair an inexpensive 75 to 300, and a lot of people do that. But your results will never, ever be sharp. I promise. It, it, you, if you get close and you can fill the frame, they'll be kind of sharp. <laughs> but uh, if you upgrade to one of these setups, you will get, again, professional grade results. It's amazing to me that you can pick up a used Canon 7D and a used Canon 400mm f5.6 lens for $1,350. I know that's not chump change, but to get pro-grade wildlife shots, I mean, even just a few years ago, you would have been looking at more like $3,000 for this setup. So I would definitely recommend picking these up used because both these pieces of equipment are built like tanks. <laughs> they last a really long time. You can use these links down here to buy used directly uh, from Amazon, which means you can return them if something doesn't work. There's not really too much risk there. Uh, this is the 400 millimeter F5.6, and, and we've owned this just forever. It is just a solid <laughs> brick of metal and glass. The images that it takes are absolutely pro. You will never want for additional sharpness. A step up from that combination is to upgrade from the older 7D, original 7D, to the 7D Mark II, which is more expensive because it's the newer body, but it has a vastly improved focusing system and it shoots at 10 frames a second. I know I keep mentioning the, the 7D Mark II, but this camera is just an amazing, amazing camera for wildlife. It tracks flying birds like crazy has just gorgeous image quality, and uh, I just I just love that combination, especially with this super lightweight 400 millimeter Canon. Works just great. Now, if you want a little more versatility, you could upgrade this, this prime lens to a zoom lens. And realistically, in the wildlife world, most of the time, you, you, it isn't a problem that you get too close to animals. Animals don't really want to get that close to you. So a, a fixed telephoto prime lens like this 400 millimeter prime on the previous slide will work just fine. But at the same time, the Canon 100-400 Mark II, not the Mark I, which is not a good lens, the Mark II is incredibly sharp, very versatile because of that zoom, and uh, we just love working with it. So if you want zoom, and maybe you want that image stabilization, which can let you get uh, steady shots at slower shutter speeds, allowing you to get cleaner images, just it's a slightly better combination at a significantly higher price point, $3,500 new or about $3,200 used. Can't get good deals on these 
yet because they're still pretty new. Another step up from this. Oh, this is going to get real expensive now. <laughs> but I would trade in those two lenses for a used copy of this 500mm f4, which has been our goal to go to wildlife lens for something like 15 years. And so if you go to my portfolio, northrophotography.com, the wildlife pictures that you see there were probably taken with this lens and probably this body too. Uh, this is definitely a pro-grade lens and it feels it. You wouldn't want to go hiking a long distance with this lens, but just look at that front element. It gathers so much light and gives you such incredible detail. The combination here you can get for under $7,000 and that's really one step up from using that kind of zoom lens. Focusing will be spot on. I promise you, you'll get so much more detail out of this than you will that, that 400 millimeter lens. Just because you go from 400 to 500 doesn't mean you get 20% more detail. You probably get 100% more detail. It's, it's really striking when you look at a side-by-side -side comparison. You can find that kind of comparison on our channel. There is a newer version of this. So this is a previous generation, older lens, and it still will cost you around six grand used. The new version, it costs you a little over $11,000 just for that lens but it is substantially sharper. I'm also recommending the newer version of the 600 millimeter lens, whereas that was the 500 millimeter. The 600 millimeter got lighter and shorter than the previous generation 600. So I picked the 500 over the 600 because it's smaller and lighter weight and that makes it easier for hand holding and carrying. But the new version has those same benefits, but a longer reach. So this combination, yeah, it'll cost you $13,000 but you will have the best wildlife setup available. Really, I, I would pick this combination for things like birds in flight, long distance wildlife shooting over just about anything else. Okay, so what about video? What if you want to be a videographer? You wanna be on YouTube? Let's start at the bare basic budget. These are gonna be one step up from, well, one huge step up from your smartphone. If you want something less than 500 bucks, you, you could definitely find it. You could even get a little camera like this. Uh, the results would be better than your smartphone probably. But my first suggestion is to pick up a Sony Alpha 5100. This great little camera, it's very similar to the Alpha 6000 here, but it has a touch screen and perhaps more importantly for us YouTubers, the screen will flip around so you can see yourself while you're filming. And that means if the camera shuts off, you will know it. If your head pokes out of the frame, you'll know it before you get it all copied to your computer and everything. It's just a great value, especially at $410 used. And that's with a lens, great little camera. A step up from that, it's a big step up. Because this camera, the FC300 from Panasonic, has 4K video. Four times the resolution of that little Sony in there. And uh, you don't need 4K video, you certainly don't. But I love having that option because it gives you the ability to do things like nice pans and zooms in post. You can leave your camera on a tripod and zoom around the screen. Check out our video about why you want to shoot in 4K video for more information. At $450 used, <laughs> this, this camera with the lens built in, it's a fixed lens camera, is just a fantastic value for somebody starting out in video. If you want interchangeable lenses, and at some point you'll probably want to be able to change your lenses out just so you can get macro shots or get telephoto shots, uh, a fantastic camera at a pretty low price point is the Panasonic G7. This camera has an articulating screen that flips out from the side again. You can monitor yourself. And uh, it just has that sort of like Panasonic image quality. We, most of these cameras in here are, are Panasonic. The one I'm talking to right now is a Panasonic. We love these Panasonic cameras for video. And uh, while you're at it, the 14 to 42 lens here is a really good value and should be sharp enough even for 4K video. But if you want a little more reach, you can upgrade to the 14 to 140 lens. The lens itself is substantially more expensive, but for sort of run and gun shooting where you might need to just zoom in to grab a really cool shot, we, we absolutely love this lens. And anytime we're out traveling, we have one of these 14 to 140 lenses on there. $1,200 new or $950 used, that would be an unbeatable, unbeatable combination. And used properly will put you among the best on YouTube. There is a step up from that in the Panasonic world, and that's the GH4. The GH4 is a very serious video camera body, and it has a lot of serious kind of pro features on it that the G7 lacks. Of course, it has an articulating touchscreen here. 
It's so nice to use, and it's definitely worth the upgrade from the G7 if you happen to have the budget. Again, I'm recommending you start with that 14 to 140. Even if you get more lenses later, you will always be glad that you have that. But what if you have any budget and you're a serious videographer, but you kind of want to stay within the DSLR world and you're worried about image quality? The Sony Alpha 7 S II is absolutely fantastic. And this is the camera we have here. It's on loan from Sony, and we've been testing this one and, and working with the previous generation for a long time. It's a stellar body with the cleanest image quality you can get basically on any camera. And I'm talking like it hangs with red cameras and stuff, like $50,000 cameras, $100,000 cameras. It's basically unbeatable, especially in low light. It's full frame, so you can take advantage of basically any full frame lens. You can get that just gorgeous background blur. You can shoot at night. It's absolutely fantastic. And not, it's a fantastic price for what it is. And if I were to pair it with any lens, it would be the pretty amazing Sony 28 to 135, which I can't show you right now because we're filming with it. <laughs> My man Justin is over here using it because that's the lens that we choose to film with when we can film with anything. So it has lots of optimizations for shooting video. We'll have a full review of that coming out really soon. For now, just know it's basically unbeatable. So which camera should you buy for both video and stills? I get this a lot because people, they want one camera that just does everything. Some people have an unlimited budget. Some people just don't want to have to make any compromises. Well, if you have an unlimited budget, the one camera for everything is the Sony Alpha 7 R II. We've been working with this camera for a long time. We actually own it, and it's the camera of choice for a lot of things. Most people would be tempted to buy that and then some Sony lenses, though, and I, I can't make that recommendation right now because we've been testing every single Sony zoom lens and we've been disappointed with them. The body itself, we're thrilled with. The Sony lenses could use some improvement. Fortunately, in the Sony world, you can adapt basically any other lens. So what we recommend doing is picking up that Sony Alpha 7 R2 and getting a Metabones Mark IV adapter does a really good job of focusing with Canon lenses. Now, pick up the Canon 24 to 105 that I've been recommending over and over again and use this adapter to attach it to it. You'll get fantastic image quality for both stills and video and it will be a very versatile combination. If you're out of the country and you, or you just want to uh, shop at B&H or another site, do me a favor and go to stp.io slash help this link takes you to a page where you can click through to use our affiliate codes. That means that we'll get just a few pennies out of every dollar that you spend, but it's what allows us to do these unbiased and fair reviews. And of course, buying gear will not make your pictures better, really won't. The most important thing you can do is educate yourself. You might spend hundreds of dollars on camera gear and not ever get good images out of it because you don't have the skills. I can teach you the skills. Visit stp.io/store and you can pick up uh, one of our books that will teach you photography, teach you Lightroom, or if you just want to know more about the gear, the Photography Buying Guide will walk you through all the lenses and camera gear that we've reviewed and tested and provide very detailed recommendations going into the minutia <laughs> of all this technical stuff. It starts at $9.99 for um, the, these video books. Each one includes over 12 hours of video that you can watch. So you can read like a book, or you can just watch the videos, or better yet, go through some combination of both. You can also just search my name, Tony Northup at Amazon and see reviews from more than a thousand people on these, these books. They help out a lot of people. So I hope you'll check them out because that will really help you more than anything else. For free, you can subscribe to this channel. And if I've been helpful at all, if you found any of this interesting, please click like and share with your friends. Thanks so much.